So today we are going to go through the OpenAI basics by building a basic chat completion using the Python and OpenAI API. In this video, we will cover grammar correction, emojis translation like text to emojis, and then we will give some code to GPT model to see how it explains that code. And then at the end, we will also provide an image and we'll ask the gpt model to explain that image to see how properly it explains that image so to cover all these things uh, we will need to first set up the python virtual environment for the open ai project and then we will create an open ai account by going to the openai.com so the first step is to create a python environment for the open ai project where we will be installing our dependencies and we will also write our source code so here i am in my terminal and the first step is to create a directory for the open ai project so i'll call it open ai basics then i'll switch to that directory and now i need to set up a python virtual environment by running a command vn and i'm creating this virtual environment in the same directory so the virtual environment is created the next step is to activate this virtual environment by running the command source vn bin activate and now to check if the environment is activated i'll run the command pip list and see this is a fresh virtual environment so we don't have any other dependencies so now to communicate and use the gpt models we need the open ai library which is available on the pypy one other library we need is to load the api key from the dot env file into our system environment and the other thing is since we will be writing our source code in the jupyter notebook we also need to install the notebook lab library so i'll quickly install all these three libraries and then we will start building the chat completion so i'll run pip install openai python.env and then also notebook these packages are installed and to confirm i can run the pip list command so now our packages are installed so the next thing i'll do is that i'll also create a env file where i'll be pasting my openai api key which i'm going to create next i'll create that file called env now the next step is that i'll go to the openai.com and i'll create an account there and then i'll also create an api key and after the api key is created we can start writing our chat completion so here i'm in my browser and i've loaded the openai.com so next i'll go to the products click on api login and if you already have an account you can go with continue with google microsoft or any other account you already have or if you have signed up with the email if you don't have any account already you can click on the sign up and then either you can put your email address or you can directly continue with one of these services so i'll click on continue with google i'll select my email and now you have two options either you can go to chat gpt to directly start using the the gpt model service and either you can go to the api if you want to integrate the api into your own system so i click on the api and this will redirect me to the openai platform where i can see all these things since i already have uh, my account so it just logged in me but if you don't have an account already it will walk you through the sign up process and then at the end you will be redirected to the screen so here you can see the api keys i'll go to the api keys i'll click on create new secret key i'll give it a name so i'll just call it openai basics project should be default and then i click on create secret key now my secret key is created so i'll just copy this secret key and i'll switch to my vs code and i'll just copy paste the secret key which i have just created from the openai dashboard so i'll call it openai api key and then i'll paste it here now to start writing the actual code i'll switch to my terminal and now i'm in the same directory where i have created my project directory and i'll write jupyter notebook so this should open the jupyter interface in my browser if i switch to my browser i can see that i don't have any jupyter notebook here so i'll click on file new and notebook the notebook is created and now i can start writing my code here so before interacting with the openai api i need to have my openai api key imported so for that i'll do from dot env import load dot env and to run this cell i'll just hold shift button and i'll press enter to load all the environment variables from the dot env file i'll hit that function called load dot 
env and this returns true that means that all the environment variables are loaded and to verify if the open ai api key is loaded or not i'll import os and then i'll try os dot get env and you can see the OpenAI API key is loaded. Now to send request to OpenAI for using the GPT models, the first thing you need to do is importing the OpenAI client from OpenAI. And the next thing is to instantiate that OpenAI client by creating a client variable. Now using this client variable, we can start sending requests to OpenAI. To send our first request to OpenAI that completion, I'll just write a simple prompt by sending a request to the open AI API by client.chat.completion.create. I can set the model here to 3.5 turbo. You can set it to the latest model as well. And the next thing is the messages. So the messages is the same as what prompt or what input you are going to send to the open AI API. So here I'm setting the role as user. This means that I'm sending this content as a user. The other role could be the system. If you want to set the behavior of the system, in a certain way you can set the rule to system and then you can type your context here but here i'm sending the message as, as a user so i'm setting the role to the user and then i'm sending the, my message that who won the first cricket world cup then if i first show you just the actual response i'll print the response here you can see the response object and to extract the actual text response from this object you can try response dot choices and then you can see the choices here it's a list of choice objects so since we have just a single response i'll get the index zero and then i I'll get the message so if you go to the choice object you can see the message attribute here and then from the message we have content which is the actual text response so if i get the output here it's giving me the final response as a text so this is how a basic chat completion works using the openai api first you need to import the client library from the openai then you need to instantiate the client and then you can use that client to start sending requests to openai api so here you can see client.chat.completion.create you can set the model you can set the messages here you can even send multiple messages here but we will discuss that later there are some other attributes like temperature how many tokens but once we used to all these things and we understand how tokens works how temperature works then we will try to make this chat completion a bit more complex so we can understand it more in depth so now let's try some more stuff so the first thing we will try is that we will try to see how the gpt model can correct our grammar so i'll call it grammar correction and i'll set it to markdown so for the grammar correction i am trying some prompt here and first i'm instructing the system that you will be provided with statements and your task is to convert them to standard english so if you guys have seen here here i was just passing the role as user and then and then i was sending the actual message but here since i am trying to change the behavior of the model and the way it will respond first i'm, I'm setting the role as system and then i'm instructing that you will be provided with the statements and you need to convert them to standard english and then i am setting the role as user and then i'm passing the actual input which i need to be responded so here i'm setting the content to key no win to the market grammatically this statement is not correct so let's see how the gpt model identifies it the gpt model has responded with the correct grammar syntax and it did not go to the market which sounds correct so next so we will give like some uh plan english word to the gpt model by explaining what emojis we need to be created and then let's see how it responds with the emojis response so this is the prompt for the emojis translation i'm instructing the gpt model you will be provided with text and your task is to translate it into emojis so do not use any regular text do your best with emojis only i'm explicitly instructing that you don't need to return any text the output should be just the emojis only and then i'm giving my actual text input here that artificial intelligence is a technology with a great promise so now you can see if i have not instructed the system here the gpt model may have responded something different but now since i am instructing and i am changing the behavior of the gpt model here i am first instructing that how you should behave before you are sending a response and then i'm sending the actual input message here now let's see how it translates this text to into emojis 
So first it has created the emoji for the artificial intelligence. Then it has created with a thumb and also some brand emoji. So now you can see we are trying different things with the GPT model and we are instructing the GPT model accordingly by using the role system. So here I'm trying to create emojis and here I'm trying to make the GPT model to correct the grammar of plain English statements. And here I'm just straightforwardly asking the question and from its trained data, it's giving me the response. So now let's see how the GPT model explain some code if we are providing some code in any language or any tool. So the overall structure is same. I'm setting the role to the system. Then I'm trying to instruct the model to behave differently. So we'll, you will be provided with a piece of code and your task is to explain it in a concise way. And then I'm setting the role to user and I'm giving my actual source code as an input. So I'm providing some CICD code in the YAML syntax, build image, Python and Python script. So this is actually the build step from a CICD pipeline and here it will just download the Python and Py Alpine image and then it will run the script to see what Python version this script is using. Let's see how this has explained the code. So this code is usually found in the configuration file of a CICD, which is correct, such as GitLab CICD. And this script was actually from the GitLab CICD. It instructs the CICD service to image Python and find what this piece of code does that use a Docker image that has Python install and an Alpine distribution. Alpine is a lightweight, which is correct. Then it explains the script part, run the Python version command as script in the created container. First it will create a container based on this image and then it will run this script inside that container so the explanation looks perfect now lastly let's just try some images and see how the gpt behaves with images so we'll give the gpt an image and then we'll ask the gpt model to explain what is in that image so here i have a public image url and first we'll see what is in that image so i'll just display it here using the jupyter notebook and then we'll provide the same url to gpt to see if it explains it correctly or not here we have a beautiful cat here and now let's see how the gpt model responds to this image first i'm creating a prompt here the type is text and then i'm asking the actual question can you explain this image to me and then I'm creating the image content structure here. The type is image URL and the image URL is the same which we have set here. So I'm passing that same image URL and then so here I'm actually preparing the prompt to include both the text prompt and also the image. So if you guys have seen previously, here we were setting the role. So this message was actually a list of different messages. And here I am setting that prompt to include both the text and the image. So if you want to include the image, you need to set the type to image the same way we were trying to set the role to user or role to system. So I'm setting the type to image URL and then I'm, pa I'm passing the image URL because if I've set it to image URL, this will expect from me to pass the image URL as well. Let's first print the prompt and see how the prompt looks like, including both image and text. So this is the prompt type is text and then the actual input. So it's a list of two dictionaries. One includes the prompt, which is the text and the other includes the image url so this is the final chat completion request which we are going to send to the gpt so i'm passing that same prompt with uh, which i have created here and the rest of the stuff is same so the role is user because i'm passing the text and that image as a user so i'm setting the role here to user and in the content i am passing that list of two dictionaries including both text and image so this is how the gpt model has responded the image depicts a close-up of a gray cat with striking green eyes so the cat has green eyes the cat color is gray which looks correct the cat is looking upwards which looks correct the background is dark which makes the cat feature stand out the background is dark so i think it has explained it in very details so here you can see we have passed the image as URL, which I have copied from this service. But if you have the image locally, you can just convert the image into a base 64 image and you can pass the image the same way we have passed here. So here the image URL will be actually a base 64 encoded data instead of the public image URL. So both here you can try to explain the images with the help of GPT, either by passing the public image URL or passing the image as a base 64 encoded URL. So now let's revise the chat completion API. Chat model takes a list of messages as input. As you have seen, the messages parameter was actually a list of 
dictionaries and each dictionary contains a role and a content the role could be system or user or assistant and the content will be the actual message in case of the user and in case of the system content will be the instruction you need to provide to the gpt model and the chat completion returns a model generated message as output messages must be an array of message object which we already discussed where each object has a role and a content the role could be system user or a system the system message helps set the behavior of the system so all these things we discussed already while we were implementing that the role system means how the gpt model should behave and the role user means what input you want to provide to the gpt model the user messages is actually a comment or a request or a, you can say the input prompt now what we have covered so far so first we created the python setup for the openai project by using openai basic project then we went to the openai platform and we created an api key and we use that api key in our source code to send requests to the OpenAI to use GPT model. And then lastly, we tried some different things with the chat completion API by trying grammar correction, text to emojis translation, code explanation. And then at the end, we tried to see how the GPT model explains an image. In the next video, we will going through the GPT model tokens to understand how GPT model converts a text input and output to generate tokens. And then based on those generate tokens how the gpt models will charge you and next we'll also briefly go through different gpt models including 3.5 and 4 turbo and 4o models